The Xbox 360 might be turning 14 years old this year, but this console was a behemoth gaming machine that paved the way for gaming in HD to become the industry standard and built a legacy of games and connectivity that a lot of gamers today still know and remember. But it's 2019 now. How does the Xbox 360 hold up today and is it worth buying in 2019? Let's go ahead and get into it. But before we get started, if you like all things Xbox 360 related, go ahead and subscribe to this channel. We do a ton of coverage on the 360 as a retro console and as Xbox as an overall brand and the future of Xbox. So if you like any of that type of stuff, be sure to subscribe to Rocketsoft because you're not going to want to miss what we put out next. The Xbox 360 was amazing. And there's no denying that this console was a major piece of history during the time between 2005 and 2013. Over the years, there was a huge, massive selection of games ranging from anything that you could really want to play. Very commonly in used shops and online stores, you can find a used Xbox 360, the original white case 360, for about $60 used. And that might look like a great deal right away, but you might want to take a closer look at the release year of the in particular console you're looking at. During the development of the Xbox 360, the main goal from Microsoft was to condense as much hardware as they could into a very small and compact space. But in doing this, it caused a ton of heating issues within the console, causing a ton of the consoles that released at launch to have a major defect, known infamously as the Red Ring of Death. So if you're looking to buy an Xbox 360 and you see this awesome deal, take a closer look at what model the Xbox 360 is, because if it is a launch console, there's a very high likelihood that it will have hardware failure. If it's a slightly later model that was released around the 2008-2009 era, that Xbox 360 could still potentially have hardware failure. It's a little bit less likely, and those consoles last a bit longer, but there are also also a ton of newer redesigned Xbox 360s that came out in 2010 known as the Xbox 360 S and the Xbox 360 E which was released in 2013. If you can get your hands on these consoles you're looking at pretty reliable hardware through and through. And since you can get one of the newer consoles for just hundred dollars it's definitely worth paying a little bit more to get the reliable hardware. Plus most often you can get this with a 250 gigabyte hard drive which is more than enough for 360 games. One of the major benefits of owning this older hardware is that the physical copies for 360 games are extremely cheap. And unlike the Xbox One, you don't have to download the game. You can just play the game right off of the disc. And that's nice for people like me, who have slower internet and would prefer not to sit around for an hour just to download a 9 gigabyte game. And since majority of the major Xbox 360 games that are really popular and were really fun back in the day are available for under $10 on sites like eBay, it definitely could be a steal to play a lot of classic games you might not have gotten to check out yet. Loading up onto the Xbox 360 is actually a pretty decent experience. The dashboard looks mostly the same as it looked many years ago. It's of course not the good old glory days Xbox dash, but it still works and it's simple to navigate. I still prefer this dashboard over the Xbox One dashboard actually, and the quick menu is still super easy to navigate. And because of the backwards compatibility, a lot of games actually still have a pretty active player base. Games that are backwards compatible on the Xbox One actually play on the same servers as players on the 360. You'll easily find that a lot of the good old Call of Duty games like World at War, Modern Warfare 2, Modern Warfare 3, and the Black Ops games have really large player base still active in those games. And even newer Call of Duty games like Call of Duty Ghosts, Advanced Warfare, and Black Ops 3, while they were segregated from the new console releases, actually still have pretty high numbers in their servers as well. Also, there's a huge number of Halo games available that you can play on the Xbox 360. Basically, you can play through the entire trilogy 
ODST, Halo Reach, and Halo 4 all on this console, and while the multiplayer aren't active on these games, you at least can play through the campaigns and see the story in their natural graphics and glory. Halo Reach, however, has an extremely active player base because the game was not ported onto the Xbox One, it was just made backwards compatible, so if you're looking for a multiplayer Halo game to play, Halo Reach is your best bet. And that's not even scratching the surface of the amazing titles that you can play on the Xbox 360. There's games like Bioshock, Mass Effect, Skyrim, The Fable series, Skate 2 and 3, Left 4 Dead, and Sonic 06. On top of that, there's a ton of Xbox Live Arcade games that are also available along with the Xbox indie titles like Doritos Crash Course or Castle Miner Z. I remember playing this DayZ ripoff called Apoc Z that was only one dollar and it was really bad, but it was really fun at the same time. I actually really miss the Xbox indie titles being a thing because you got a chance to play these really great or bad or funny bad games and you only risked a dollar on it so if the game was awful it wasn't like you spent $60 on trash. There's also a ton of options in place to just use this console as a basic media system if that's what you're looking for. You can use the system as a DVD and the rare HD DVD player, and it has standard media streaming services as well, like YouTube, Twitch, Netflix, and Hulu. The social functions on the Xbox 360 are also still intact in the way that they used to be. It's very easy to add friends to your friends list, send messages, and chat with multiple friends at the same time in an Xbox Live party. It is a little disappointing that to use a lot of these functions like party chat, you need to have a subscription to Xbox Live. I feel like at this point, I wish that Xbox Live was just included in the fact that you're playing on the system and you'd be possibly purchasing things off of the store, but unfortunately you do have to still sign up for Xbox Live and it's the same price as the Xbox One Live service, which is about $60 a year or $10 a month. But at least by having a subscription to Xbox Live, you do receive two games a month through the Xbox Live Games with Gold promotion, which is actually usually at least one decent game every month. On top of that, there are also a couple of free games you can get off of the Xbox 360 store, like Aegis Wings, Air Mech Arena, Crimson Alliance, Defiance, Doritos Crash Course, Harm's Way, and a ton of other games. But even then, you can get games like Tomb Raider on eBay for $7. So there's a ton of opportunities to play different games on the Xbox 360 if you're on a tighter budget. Now, alternatively to all of this, you could probably pick up a used Xbox One S for about $150, which would cost $50 more, but still allow you access to all of the new titles that released for the Xbox One, and have access to the large backwards compatible library that Microsoft offers. And if you pair that with a subscription to the Xbox Live Game Pass, which is only $9.99 a month, you actually will end up having a ton of free games that you can play right out of the get-go. And instead of just receiving two free games a month from the Xbox Live Games with Gold, you actually receive four games by having two Xbox One games and the two Xbox 360 games that also release. So it really is up to you where you stand on which console would be a better fit to play Xbox 360 games. Personally, I enjoy playing games on the console that they were originally intended for. There's something kind of special and nuanced about playing the game on the original console as if the game was brand new. Another major selling point for the Xbox 360, if you're not looking necessarily for online play, is the fact that you can actually modify your Xbox with really simple mods to make your Xbox 360 something extremely unique that can play a ton of different things. Just by running a few simple and free modifications, once again you can't connect to Xbox Live with these mods, you're able to change the way the dashboard looks, run emulators of other hardware or other consoles, and you can even modify the single player of certain games that you weren't able to do in the past, like look through different walls in the Halo Reach campaign by clipping around. It's not something necessarily that you have to do outright, but it is a cool feature that you can do on the Xbox 360 if you're looking for something different and you don't really care about connecting to Xbox Live. But I do also completely see the convenience of having all the games available in one place on the Xbox One. And if you play Xbox 360 games on the Xbox One X, a lot of the times there's some graphical enhancements. Look at Halo 3 for example. But anyways, that's 
that's all the time we have for today. If you enjoyed this video though, hit the like button down below and be sure to subscribe to Rocket Sloth for more coverage on the Xbox 360. We also have merch, check it out, it's on your screen. There's some very clever designs if you want to represent the glory days of the Xbox, go ahead and check them out and maybe support this channel at the same time. Or check out these other videos that we also have made because that also helps our channel grow. Otherwise, thanks all for watching and we'll see you all next time with a brand new video.